Hey guys, so in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the best ways to stay on the field as an athlete and to get the highlights that you want. We're talking about how to prevent injuries long before they happen. So I got seven tips for you. Let's just cut to the chase. Cue intro. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Javis, and everything we go over in this channel are things like general health and fitness to the questions you might have as an athlete wanting to play college athletics. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell notification next to it so that you can get notifications every time I make an upload. And without further ado, let's get into the video. The first tip is you need to get sleep. Sleep at night is so important. Resting and recovering your body will help prevent so many injuries. When you're at practice and you really don't want to be there because you stayed up all night playing video games or watching Netflix or something, you're not going to want to be there. And when you're going through drills and stuff, you have a greater potential to hurt yourself because you're being lazy about the form. And we all know when you don't have good form when you're playing your sport, whether it be football, basketball, hockey, even golf. If you swing wrong, you can really hurt your shoulder. So getting sleep at night is one of the easiest and most critical things that you can actually do for yourself without really having to do anything other than laying your head down and going to bed. Now, I know a lot of you might be saying, we have school, we have homework. And that's true. That's absolutely true. And you know, it's really hard to get that sleep. You gotta be on it. You have to, a lot of times being a student athlete is not about having fun and that kind of sucks to say but it, you really have to keep yourself on a time schedule and make sure that you are allocating time for certain things that you need to get done during the day so you're not staying up till three in the morning doing it you know if you are then you're gonna come to practice the next morning super groggy and you know you're gonna get hurt so it's important to just try and be an adult about it and make sure you get your homework you work earlier shifts if you have a job stuff like that it, you just want to make sure that you get it done beforehand so you can try and get I'd say at least six hours of sleep. They recommend probably eight, maybe nine, but really at least six so you can at least get through the day. That's not even conquering the day, that's getting through the day. Man, I don't wanna be here. Why did I step on that point in Warzone? Hey, we got the dub though. <laughs> So my second tip is to make sure that you're getting a lot of fluids in your body throughout the day to make sure that you're not cramping up and getting yourself out of the game early. But honestly, make sure you're taking it easy on the Gatorade, go more heavy on the water because Gatorade has a lot of sodium in it and in the long run, it can actually hurt you. Water is weakness. Who the hell are you? Water no, is you know weakness. What? I don't care, get the hell out of my house. So you're telling me that Water actually helps prevent both serious and minor injuries, and we learned it through science? Yes. Yes, that's what I've been trying to tell you for the last two hours. Can you leave now? Let's talk about the next tip, and it's stretching. Just to be straight up with it, it's stretching. You have to stretch. Stretch before practice, stretch after practice, stretch at night, stretch in the mornings. The more you make sure you're flexible, the less likely you are to tear something or to get any kind of injury. Now, I can't say that it will prevent all all injuries, but understanding that in layman's terms, when your muscles are stretchy, you know, you're flexible, you're less likely to have them break or tear essentially it, that's the most simplest way i can put it to you without getting into the super sciencey part of it uh but just understand straight up that you need to stretch just the more flexible you are the better it is for you as an athlete in general you're faster you're less likely to get hurt and there's a lot of, there's just a lot of advantages so say you're caught in a very uncomfortable position say in a play in football and your body's like ooh. That's uncomfortable. You could either one, be flexible enough to where your body's like, it's uncomfortable, but we can bounce back and recover from this. Or you could be not flexible and your body could be like, oh no. <laughs> and it doesn't want to flex anymore. And then you're out of the game or you're at least hurting really badly for the rest of the game. So make sure that you're stretching all the time, just really all the time before practice, after practice, 
before any type of exercise. I do the same warm up before any type of exercise. It doesn't matter what it is. And it was given to us by our PSU strength and conditioning head coach. So really just make sure you're stretching at all times of the day, just morning, night, before practice, after practice, before any type of exercise. I do the same uh, warm up before every single exercise that I do, whether it's going for a quick jog, going for sprints, going for routes, a workout. I just do the same warm up and it's pretty all inclusive body wise. So I make sure to warm up my whole body and get a little sweat going to make sure that my body's ready to roll and none of my muscles are cold and are more likely to get hurt. All right, listen, so this next one, one is gonna be kind of hard to listen to because a lot of people are always talking about grind through the pain grind through the pain well when we're talking about injuries you don't want to do that it's actually good to take breaks and you can actually gain more from your training when you do take breaks so when you take breaks say in a workout say in between each set you take a mandatory 60 seconds to 75 second rest time most people be like just i want to grind out my workout i want to go actually taking time in between those two sets can make it so that you can actually perform better on the next set now taking off too much time you're going to lose out and get diminishing returns from the rest of the workout and that's because your body isn't going to respond the same way as it would if you were to take that mandatory 60 second break instead of say a five minute break you don't want to be taking a five minute break but you do want to take breaks in between your workouts in between your exercises on the field make sure because if you go into a state of exhaustion that can one be very unhealthy in general but two if you try and play through that you're way more likely to get injured because your body is just not going to be able to make the same types of cuts the same types of movements and catch yourself at the bottom of the squat what i'm trying to get at is make sure you're taking care of your body the same way it takes care of you and piggybacking off that point we're going to go to my next point which is taking a rest break during the week so say you work out Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and you run throughout all those days and you do your heavy running on Wednesdays and Sundays. This is my workout routine. I make sure to rest on Saturdays is my main point. You wanna make sure you get at least one rest day, maybe two, depending on the amount of exhaustion and work you're putting your body through throughout the week. It's important to analyze the amount of physical labor you're putting your body through to make sure it can recover and perform to the best of its ability the following week and the following week. You wanna make sure you're, like I said, you're taking care of your body. All right, listen, so these last two tips kind of work hand in hand. One's a little different from the other because of the way you do it but I'm gonna go through them back to back so let's get into it all right so the first one's gonna be standard muscle training as athletes we know that muscle training and any type of weight training physical training is important to maintaining our physical shape and making sure we can make the same cuts swing the same clubs the same ways stronger faster understanding that it does more than just show physical performance it keeps your body in a state of being able to continue performing. If my leg muscles aren't strong enough to continue performing throughout a full game, they're gonna give out. The way they do that is by getting calf cramps, muscle strains, and other things that are gonna take me out of the game if my legs aren't strong enough to support what I do throughout the game. It's really as simple as that. Let me give you an example. So let me tell you something from someone who has torn their ACL and meniscus. While mine was a contact injury, I learned a lot about non-contact injuries and how they can ultimately be prevented. Really for the different joints in your body, you wanna build muscle around it to allow it strength so that it won't crumble when you maybe get into an uncomfortable position or you cut wrong your muscles can compensate for that shock and your body won't immediately tear that ligament now like I said for a contact injury usually there's not a whole lot that your body can do to prevent that no brace or anything is gonna prevent you from tearing your ACL all those braces you see Lyman wear are to prevent non-contact injuries so a lot of training can't really prevent a contact injury all the time from happening, which kind of sucks, but that's just the nature of sports. So the last tip is, I guess, gonna be kind of a bonus tip because it doesn't exactly have enough to stand on its own merits as its own 
hip, we'll say it's a bonus tip. So it's basically single leg and unilateral training, and you wanna make sure that you're doing this for um, no, numerous reasons, but the main reason you wanna do these exercises is for those big knee injuries like what I had, ACL and meniscus tear. You wanna make sure you're building that single leg stability. When you work out with your single leg and unilateral exercises, you're making it so you're building those muscles that usually wouldn't get work that are based on balance and based on different things around the uh, joint to allow it to strengthen and not break in non-contact situations. So you guys have done all these tips. You're staying on the field. You're making these big plays. And now you're asking, okay, Javis, so what now? Where do I go with this? How do I get recruited? Well, lucky for you, I made a video about that. If this video helped you guys in any way, make sure you leave a like down below. It really does help the channel. And go ahead and comment what you guys want to see on this channel next because I have a lot of ideas, but I want to do what you guys are wanting me to do because it's about you and I want to be a resource for you. So tell me what you guys want to see me talk about. If you guys are fans of the channel and want to see me talk about more things football related or anything health, fitness, anything of like that, go ahead, subscribe, click that bell notification to make sure you get notifications every time I get an upload and I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, I fell down. <laughs>